Hey, Larkin Rose here. Uh, first thing is, if you're watching this before August 5th, 2023, you should go sign up for the uh, online watch party of the Jones Plantation movie when it actually becomes accessible to the whole world. Um, and the link will be in the description below for how to sign up for that. Uh, one thing you can do is organize a bunch of people in your, that you know where you live, friends, enemies, allies, voluntary, statists, left, right, don't care. And, uh, you know, you only have to sign up once and you can have a bunch of people watch. Uh, so we hope lots of people have their own little watch parties all around the whole freaking world while we're doing that. But the link is below so you can sign up for that. Um, we'll be yelling that yelling about that more in the future. I wanted to do a video about the concept of the whole, like nobody's above the law thing and how basically it's ridiculous in a number of different ways. First of all, the entire notion of the law, like people talk about it as if it's, well, it's some special magical thing. You can't break the law. You can't disobey the law. And it really is this weird religious rhetoric in, because if you just described it as you can't disobey those guys over there, like a bunch of politicians. Yeah, we know they're corrupt crooks and you know, you don't know who they are and they don't give a crap about you, but you have to obey them because you're a bad person if you don't that wouldn't fly and it just, it wouldn't convince anybody. So they have to do these weird pseudo religious rituals and then pretend that what comes out the other side isn't just the arbitrary commands and opinions of a bunch of parasitical crooks. No, it's the law. It's this magical thing that you're somehow beholden to. You're somehow obligated to obey it because it isn't just the whim of people. They're pretending. It's this thing where they went through this bizarre legislative process and the House did their version of the bill and the Senate did their version of it and it went back and forth and then they enacted it in all this legalese gobbledygook and after they did all their magic things and then the president signed it into law, but today I am still just a bill. All the crap you learned in civics about how something becomes law is just a giant pile of shit designed to disguise the fact that it's just arbitrary made up shit from a bunch of crooks over there telling you, you have to do this or we're going to send enforcers to hurt you. All of the rhetoric about law and crime and legality and the legislative process and representative government, you know, I've talked about that a million times. Now, within that framework, within the template of statism that assumes that law is actually something, that man-made law matters or has any moral significance whatsoever, any more than if I said, I'm allowed to rob you because I just wrote it on a piece of paper, like I did a video about a million years ago. Like, all of that is ridiculous, but I can demonstrate that that's not even what people really believe. Because the rhetoric we're taught is, well, now there's these written rules called the law that just, like, magically came into existence. They're not just stuff made up by those political crooks. No, this is the law. This is the law of the land. Like the land wrote some laws and now you have, no, it's just political crooks. But on top of that mythology, the, the joke is, I mean, the serious principle is that nobody's above the law. We are all beholden to the law. What about the people who make it? Obviously, they're above the law because they get to decide what it says. And then they get to violate it all over the place even after they decided what it said and they get away with it most of the time. But even that is just BS rhetoric that doesn't really match what people believe and how they behave. And I'll give an example. If you signed up with some bank to get a loan to buy a car and you agree, you sign... Let's say you're one of those weird people who actually bothers to look at a contract before you're signing it. And you go, yeah, it says I have to give you X many dollars every month um, until I've paid this off. And you, the bank, are going to loan me that money. <laughs> Never mind <laughs> the whole Federal Reserve racket. Let's pretend for a minute the banks aren't one giant fraudulent scam in and of themselves. 
And you sign up and it says, okay, if you fail to make a certain number of payments, we can come repossess the car. We can come take the car back because you didn't hold up your end of the deal. Okay, now people can grumble about that and, and you know, they're not too thrilled when that happens. But okay, that's kind of to be expected. The person agreed and if they couldn't keep up with the payments in the bank since, you know, repo man, <laughs> to take the car, oh well. Now compare that to, oh, I just hired that guy to just steal my neighbor's car. Had nothing to do with a loan or any obligation or any agreement or any contract. I just hired him, he, go steal his car. Just like Repo Man does in the case where somebody actually agreed to an arrangement and then couldn't uphold his end of the deal. But in this case, I'm just gonna hire him to just take my neighbor's car. Now, everybody would say, well, that's bogus and immoral and horrible and like the guy shouldn't do it just because you paid him and you're also horrible for trying to hire somebody to, to steal your neighbor's car. Say, like, oh, well, that's, that's a technicality of whether or not he like agreed to make a payment. And you know, it's the same thing as the bank repossessing a car other than the little fact that like he didn't agree to anything and it has nothing to do with contract. But I mean, you still have to respect the process of taking the car. And so you have to let me or let my hired thug come and take your car. And later you can like sue me in court, but you're not allowed to like stop me from stealing your car. Like if I claim that everybody would think I was completely nuts. Say, yes, the guy has a right to stop you. He has the right to shoot the repo man if he's just stealing his car. Like, it has nothing to do with a loan agreement or anything else. It's just that guy is stealing somebody else's car. That's not okay. People have the right to resist that by force. Okay. And you may be thinking, yeah, that's bleeding obvious. Why are you bothering to explain this? Let's compare that to law enforcement. Because... The way we're supposed to believe it, there's these written rules, these the knowable law that you can look it up and see what's legal and illegal. Now that in itself is a kind of a joke and I'll refer you to Kafka for an explanation of how our legal system actually works. But let's permit, pretend for a minute that the law is knowable. Like you can look it up, okay, you're not allowed to do this, you have to do this, this is the deal. And within that setting, within the, the, the paradigm of law enforcers, if you believe in law, okay, you were doing something like you were driving 700 miles an hour. It's not physically possible. You're going 100 miles an hour in a 25 zone and a cop puts on his lights and pulls you over and says, do you know how fast you were going? Because apparently he can't just tell you and gives you a ticket. Okay, well, there's a law that says you're not allowed to do that. You broke the law, so he's giving you a ticket. Now, let's suppose he pulls somebody over and said, do you know how fast you were going? Yeah, I was going 25 in a 25 zone. Well, that's right, you were going 25. Now give me $200. Now, okay, so that's obviously outside of the law. That's just literal armed robbery without even the excuse of legality and without the excuse of the law. Like, you're not allowed to ticket somebody for doing something that isn't against the law. And Like, within their rules, within their paradigm, within the status paradigm, the cop isn't supposed to fine you or arrest you for something that isn't illegal. And they do it all the time. They illegally detain people all the time. Now, it's sort of cool that more and more people are at least becoming aware enough to say, first of all, I'm not answering your questions because I don't nearly trust you. You're not here for my benefit. Second of all, what's the probable cause? Like, am I free to go? Because under our system, pretending that they abide by it for a minute, they need probable cause to think that you committed a crime before they have the right to detain you, much less arrest you. I mean, it's the same thing. Even a temporary, it's not just, well, I'm just going to illegally detain you for five minutes. Any amount of illegal detaining is illegal. They're not supposed to do that within their rules. So let's consider that point because you can see 80 bazillion videos of power happy, clueless cops illegally detaining people and demanding things they have no right to demand. Like, let me see your ID. Somebody walking down the sidewalks. Like, I don't have to show you. Well, now I'm going to arrest you and now I'm going to be super cool. Within their rules, they're not allowed to do that. Within their rules, that is legally just kidnapping. 
Now, the, the, there's actual a federal statute, um, 42 U.S.C. 1983, that's about law enforcers, state law enforcers or local, doing things, basically oppressing people under color of law, which means I'm violating your rights and pretending that I'm acting on behalf of the law when I do that, but I'm not really. <laughs> like, there isn't actually a law justifying this. Um, incidentally, I dealt with that myself and dragged a local zoning control freak jackass into federal court for quite a while um, for a 1983 thing because he was like, I'm going to fine you for not allowing an inspection of your home while I was building an addition. And I said, you're not allowed to. And the Supreme Court says you're not allowed to. You don't have a warrant. You don't have my permission to be there. And there's nothing to inspect yet. So, no, we're not doing that. And so they did their dance around game and tried to pretend they can do whatever the hell they want and went back and forth. Supreme Court says very clearly, you know, it, it, for all the stuff that's complicated and messy, this was not complicated and messy. They said, yes, even building spec inspectors, if they don't have the agreement of the, the owner or the resident, they need a warrant to be able to even do routine inspections. Clear as day. That's what, the, that's what their official rules say. And of course, they just decided to make up new powers and it went back and forth and it turned into a giant nothing, but at least I got to be a pain in their ass. Incidentally, I wrote a little book about it called Parasites on Parade, which tells that whole ridiculous thing because it gives a good illustration of how people in government, even at the local level, just automatically turn into power-happy parasitical pieces of crap instead of decent human beings. Anyway, that's sort of an aside, but it's about the fact that there is this concept that if a cop does something that's outside of his authority, but he's pretending to act on behalf of law enforcement, that is a, a particular crime. There's a, there's a civil rights, like criminal statute makes it a crime, and then there's the civil statute in 1983 that makes them subject to personally being sued. Because if some cop breaks into your house and like, I ate all your cookies, but I'm a cop. So I'm allowed to. Yeah, no, you're not. And when you get sued, you can't hide behind the government because the government didn't say you're allowed to barge into people's houses and eat their cookies for no reason. That was you, you just making it up. So the point of that statute is it, it takes the, the, the thug of the state who acts outside of his supposed authority and isolates him and said, this is just on you. We didn't give you permission to do that, which means now you're just a guy trespassing or assaulting or, or, you know, doing whatever you're not supposed to do because there was nothing in the law saying that you as a law enforcer are allowed to do that. And yet cops do it all the time. They're constantly illegally detaining people. They're constantly illegally interrogating people. They're constantly illegally searching places, demanding ID for someone walking down the street, demanding things, bossing people around, Declaring that everything's a lawful order. You will stop recording me. Never mind that the courts have said 80 billion times that if somebody isn't interfering with an investigation, you're allowed to report, record people in public, especially thugs of the state. So, again, all of their rules are bogus. The whole foundation of their notion is bogus. But imagining that that's real, imagining that that's legitimate, if you get a cop that says, I'm detaining you, and he doesn't give a reason for probable cause that an actual crime was committed. And in fact, or he gives a reason that was little like, I'm going to take your camera and detain you for recording, even though that's legal and all the courts say you're allowed to do that. Okay, so within their rules, he's just a thief and a kidnapper. He's stealing somebody's camera and he's kidnapping them. There's no law backing that up. Yeah, he may be wearing his clown uniform with his shiny badge, and there is no justification within their own rule set that justifies that. Now, how does the rest of the world view that? Remember that analogy of the bank saying, well, you agreed to this, and now we're repossessing your car because you couldn't keep up with payments, compared to somebody saying, I'm just taking your car, using the same procedures as repossession, but you didn't agree to anything and has nothing to do with you owing anybody anything. This is just me taking your car. Those look different as night and day to normal people. What about when a cop steps beyond his legal authority? Again, the legal is bogus, but let's use an example, because they happen constantly, of a cop stepping beyond that. Okay, now, by your own rules, you're just a thief and a kidnapper. 
You're trying to steal this guy's phone and you're trying to, to hold him hostage. You're illegally detaining him and there's no legal justification. In the minds of the vast majority of, of people, what does the victim of that have the right to do? Because if the person says, you know, screw you, I'm not going to give you my phone. Well, you have to. And if the cop reaches for his gun and the person reaches for his own gun and says, no, now you're an armed robber trying to steal my phone and illegally kidnap me. And you're not even pretending you have probable cause to think I, I committed a crime. You're just power happy bastard. And I'm going to defend myself from this kidnapper. How do most people view that? <gasps> you can't do that. You have to just let yourself be victimized by this thug of the state and then later like file a complaint or try to sue them in court because they absolutely view the jackasses with badges as being above the law. Because if they didn't, then within the framework of their own assumptions, people would have the right to say, yeah, dude, you're not gonna kidnap me just because you have a badge when you're just making up an excuse that you don't like me filming you being a sadistic fascist bastard. Like, tough, that's not even illegal within your own stupid rules. But even in that setting, a whole lot of people, now it's not everybody, because some people, and it's actually more and more people, are realizing, of course you have the right to resist. Like, if it's, a, if it's an illegal detaining, even statists with a shred of, like, conscience and principle say, well, yeah, if they're just making crap up, that's just unbridled, arbitrary tyranny. If thugs can just literally do anything they want and they don't even have to have a law backing it up, yeah, you have the right to resist that. So there's a certain number of people who believe that, but there's still a lot of people who would say, no, you have to go along with it. And I don't just mean on a practical level of you might want to go along with it because you'll probably lose in a gunfight with them. But the moral question of are you obligated to allow yourself to be victimized by thugs of the state when what they're doing doesn't even have legal backing within their own crappy rules. And a lot of people still, the thing that matters to them is, you're, you're a representative of authority, I must do as you say, and then beg the master to please tell me that, that you didn't do it right, or that, okay, we're dropping. And you look how many times that the cops just make up crap illegally detain people and then, oh, we drop the charges against this person. Oh, well then it's perfectly fine that you temporarily kidnapped and assaulted this person based on nothing. No, it isn't. And if anybody else did that, you think, oh, well, yeah, the, that person kidnapped a kid for a few hours, but then they'd let them go. So that's good, right? No, not right. That doesn't make it okay. And cops are constantly illegally detaining, which is basically kidnapping people. And after the fact, like, oh, okay, I guess you're free to go. Like, okay, so you just temporarily illegally detain me under threat of violence. But now we're supposed to be okay with that because you have a badge. And the weird thing is built into US law going back a long time is actually this principle that a cop acting outside his official authority isn't considered a cop anymore. He's just a guy. And there was a Supreme Court case. It was uh, John Bad Elk versus United States, or maybe United States versus John Bad Elk. I forget. But it was some cop just making up power he didn't have, and a guy on an Indian reservation, like, resisted and then shot and killed him. And they're like, oh, we can, you're a cop killer. He was literally just being a kidnapper. He was just making up authority he didn't have, the fact that he was wearing a uniform doesn't change the fact that what the cop did was 100% illegal. And the Supreme Court, like, described the whole case and why, yeah, you had no authority to do any of this, Mr. Copper. And they basically concluded, yeah, if you're doing stuff that you don't even have any backing within the legal system and somebody resists you, even up to frickin' shooting you, that guy might have been in the right. That guy might be justified. And, and they say that in the ruling that you know, what might have been like homicide in some other case, like if the cop is doing something which he had no authority to do, maybe it's like manslaughter, maybe it's no crime at all. It depends on the situation and it depends on whether there was any legal authority. But you look at the mentality of most people and they still think not just the, the, the practical 
approach is to, you know, try not to get shot yourself. So kind of go along with it if you don't have a, any chance of winning anyway. But they think that the moral choice is to bow to completely arbitrary, unbridled power of, of sadistic bastards wearing badges and then later complain about it and see if you can get the case thrown out as if that changes it. Oh, now you just temporarily assaulted and robbed me and uh, like the cops will steal a camera and delete everything on it. And, oh, sorry, we weren't supposed to do that. Yeah, but you still freaking did it. And again, if you look at the actual rules, the Supreme Court even says, yeah, illegally detaining someone even for temporarily, that's still a, a permanent harm. That's not okay. You're not allowed to just, oh, well, I only abused people for like 10 minutes and then, then I stopped. So it's okay, right? No, it's not, including under their rules, including when a thug with a badge does it. But if you look at the mentality of people, while they apply to, to the normal peasantry, the thing of, well, of course you need to know the law. And if you didn't know law number 8,527 about some damn obscure thing you've never heard of, and they give you a ticket for it, well, oh, well, that's your problem. And you have to pay up and do as they told. But when they don't know their own laws and they act way beyond their legal authority, you should still bow and grovel and, and kiss the royal ring and do as you're told because if you resist you're the bad guy in any other setting nobody would think that they might think well yeah if a street gang attacks you you might want to give them your car keys to avoid dying but you're not a bad person <laughs> for not giving them your car keys you're not even a bad person for freaking shooting them if they're pointing a gun at you you're defending yourself and everybody can recognize that when you're talking about a person dealing with a person. But this demonstrates that the belief in authority really and truly makes the majority of humanity view agents of the state as something superhuman, something that has rights that mere mortal human beings don't, and that we have an obligation to bow to them and do as we're told, even when their own rules say they weren't allowed to do that. And it shows the, the ridiculous, just religious nature of the belief in government that people still, oh, it's an authority figure. And, you know, people are trained to, to see them this way since they're little. Oh, you have to respect the police and their authority and the law, this magical thing called law, which it isn't just the opinion of those crooks over there. No, it's something glorious and it's the glue that holds society together and whatever other crap they can make up to try to trick you into thinking you have to pay tribute to and obey a bunch of jackasses in D.C. or state capitals or anywhere else. But it demonstrates the absurdity of of anyone in government pretending, well, nobody's above the law. Because even when they go completely outside of their rules, nothing happens to them. For example, and I think you're allowed to talk about this now, when the federal courts threw out the mask mandate, if most people haven't read that ruling and the media you know, did their best spin on the ruling to make it sound like, oh, I guess maybe we don't need it anymore or some technicality. It wasn't a technicality. The federal court explained in great detail why the federal government and the CDC never from the beginning had anything close to any authority to command or require anything of the sort of anybody ever under any circumstances. That was the ruling, which means all of that crap was just some people making some shit up and then punishing anybody who disobeyed their completely illegal arbitrary commands. That's what the court said it was. That's what the federal court ruling said that was. A giant, prolonged, illegal, unconstitutional command backed by nothing. Not at all backed by the law. Now, if you and I threatened force and coercion against a bunch of people if they didn't do whatever arbitrary thing we made up on our own and we dragged that out for months and months or years or I forget how long that particular thing went on and somebody said, hey, we've been looking about it, at this and we thought about it for a couple of years and decided you didn't really have the right to do that. Do you think we could just go, oh, whoops, sorry, oh well, see ya. You think we'd get away with that? 
No. Why did they? Because everybody who believes in government thinks people in government are above the law. Because that was literally their own court saying, yeah, what they did when they did this was way above the law. It was way beyond their authority. And courts have done that about a number of things. If you totally weren't, <laughs> totally weren't allowed to do that, and you did it anyway. What are the ramifications? What are the negative consequences to the people who inflicted that on millions and millions of people based on no legal authority? Nothing. Because they're just royalty. The technicality of what the laws say isn't what ultimately matters to people. People think, well, their government and they'll decide it and their courts will, you can go beg their courts. Like, but even when the courts come out and say, yeah, you know that thing they forced on you all that time? All of that was unconstitutional. They had no legal authority to do any of that any more than I do or you do. To just tell everybody, yeah, I'm going to make you all wear purple hats and I'm going to shut down your business and send men with guns to screw up your life if I catch anybody without a purple hat. Now, if I had the thuggery to enforce that and did it for a year and then somebody made a ruling that said, oh, uh, yeah, Larkin's not really allowed to do that. You think it would be OK if I just go, oh, whoops. Oh, well, yeah, OK, I won't do that anymore. Is that fine? Does that solve it? <laughs> We're all settled now. There are no consequences to the people who inflict this destruction on humanity, even when their own system and their own courts and their own judges say, yeah, yeah you were never allowed to do any of that. None of that was based on legality at all. Because in the end, that doesn't matter. Just the imaginary authority is what matters. Because in the minds of normal people, as long as you're a representative of authority, you can basically do anything you damn well please. And if anybody resists you, most of the peasants are going to view you as the bad guy. Even if what you're resisting doesn't even fit within their own rules, isn't even justified by their own rhetoric and mythology. It's still, well, you have to do as you're told. He didn't do as he was told. Blah, blah, blah. And it's just, it's a weird thing to watch, but it, it, it's another way to demonstrate that the, the whole legal system and all their written crap, the entire purpose of the written system of law is not what you were taught in school. The entire purpose of the written system of law is to pretend to the subject class that it's actually knowable and applies to everybody and that there are principles involved and that it's predictable and there's fairness and there's due process. No. There's a whole bunch of legalese noise to hide the fact that they do whatever the hell they want. And the only limitation, the only limitation is at what point the people will actually resist and maybe even get nasty resisting. That's the only limit they care about. They don't care about your votes. They don't, they don't care about their courts who let them get away with a whole bunch of stuff. And I, I've said this before. I literally think the job of the courts is basically to say... If we let you you politicians get away with this thing, you might cause a revolution and then they're just going <laughs> to slaughter all of you. So we're going to pretend we suddenly care about the Constitution. There is not a federal court in the country who gives a shit about the Constitution. None of them, none of them abide by the U.S. Constitution. Ninth and Tenth Amendments, there are zero federal courts anywhere at any level who give a shit about what the Constitution actually says. All they care about is what can we get away with? And that's it. And that is measured by people's blind belief in authority and nothing else. All the scribbles just don't matter in the end. They're arbitrary. They're ignored constantly by the thugs. They don't mean anything. That's the show they put on to pretend that it's not just random arbitrary power they have. It's random arbitrary power they have. And the only check on that is the point at which people will actually disobey and resist. And that's the only thing they care about. And so it's, it's a little bit sad to see how often people on a gut level imagine that thugs of the state have the right to do anything. And even if they do something completely illegal, you should go along with it and then later ask some other authority to like correct them and tell them they were wrong or maybe even give you some stolen taxpayer money to make up for them abusing you. And then they probably get promoted anyway. And 
So once that belief and authority is broken, then people lose that feeling and all the scribbles and technicalities of what's legal and illegal, they don't matter anymore. Because then you recognize, even with the scribbles, you're just a guy. You can have your clown uniform and your badge and scribbles over there and your politicians speaking gobbledygook legalese over there and doing their pseudo-religious rituals. You're still just people and we don't have any obligation to put up with any of your crap any more than we would if our neighbor did the exact same thing to us. And when people get to that point, all of the legalese scribbling won't matter in the slightest. And that's why I'm constantly talking about how focusing on the legalese scribble as if that's the problem and that's where the solution is going to happen. That entire discussion is still part of the problem because it's still assuming these people, these people have a right to oppress us in certain ways. They have to just rob us and oppress us and control us by the book. And so we can nitpick about whether they quite did it exactly right when they were robbing us and, and bossing us around and caging people for nonviolent crimes. We can nitpick about that, but don't you dare suggest that the divine right of politicians isn't real. The divine right of politicians isn't real. <laughs> <laughs>